Now we're going to speak with uh, Gabriel Byrne in just a minute, but first, how many of you remember Pat Cowboy Barry, the Reardons, 1979? It's no use. Half is dead. He's dead before we start. Even if she wasn't, she'd never have been able to stand all this strain. He is an awful size of a calf. Still, I've seen heifer smaller than her calf without trouble. Would she be all right? That's hard to say. All this pulling and tearing. Her hindquarters are going to be very weak. You mean she mightn't get up again? And it often happens after a difficult birth. He'd have been a fine calf if he'd lived. <laughs> oh, God. Gabriel, how important was the Reardons to your career? Well, it was the first um, television uh, that I had done. Uh, until that time, I had been a stage actor working at the, uh, the Project Theatre in Dublin, um, which was basically a theatre that came into uh, existence because there wasn't really anywhere where actors like myself could, um, uh, could go to work, except the Abbey and, and the Gate. And um, <coughs> we did a lot of experimental theatre work, a lot of very popular work, and it was, uh, The Readings was the first opportunity I had to work in front of camera. And uh, I learned a great deal from it. And uh, it's only looking back on it now that I realised the, the uh, experience that I gained from doing uh, The Readings has stood me in, you know, terrific stead since then. You went on to move to England. When did you do that? Um, the follow-up to, uh, to The Readings was a programme called uh, Bracken. And, um, it was based on the character that I played in the Raidens, and uh, it was a twelve-part, a uh, twelve-part series. And although it was very good for me at the time, um, uh, as soon as the the series finished, everybody knew who I was. But at the same time, um, it was very um, limiting for me because um, I was typecast as the character that I played. And so consequently, I found it very difficult to get work in the theatre after that because not many people wanted to use me because they felt that I was too, too well known from, um, from television. And uh, in that way, it was very limiting. So I had to leave Ireland, really, in the end because um, the work just wasn't coming in. And for a long time, I was, I was unemployed. Uh, after Bracken finished, I was unemployed for uh, 10 months which is uh, quite a long period of time for an actor to, to be not working. So I felt that I had to make the move to England uh, to find new audiences and to find new kind of challenges for, um, uh, for myself as an actor. What kind of roles were you offered at first? Well, I was offered the traditional kind of um, roles that British television seems to uh, offer to Irish actors, which were um, drunken kind of... Uh, <laughs> drunken priests or IRA men on the run or... Um, <laughs> you know, uh, very, very um, uh, limiting, um, uh, cliched, cardboard-type characters. And I made a conscious decision at that time that I, just not w I, w I was just not prepared, no matter how hard it was, to perpetuate the myth of the Irish as being a stupid, drunken, uh, drunken race. And I spent a long time in London as well, um, because I turned down these various parts, uh, unemployed as well. And I found it extremely difficult to break into the English market because um, there is an attitude there. Um, prejudice, I suppose, would be too strong a word, but there's certainly an attitude that they have towards Irish actors where they tend to pigeonhole you and think, um, well, there's not very much else you can do except do Irish parts. But uh, yes, we're very pleased to meet you and it was really <coughs> nice talking to you, etc. But bye-bye. Is this in film as well? Um, at that time, I, I, I wasn't working in film, but I'm talking about um, the, the, early, the early days when I was there in terms of television. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> the one thing that used to really annoy me was I'd go in because um, when I left Ireland, I was extremely well known from Bracken. And uh, when I went to England, uh, a producer talked to me about a potential TV series and he thought that Bracken was a biscuit. So I knew that, um, <laughs> I, knew that I was on kind of in, in unknown territory. And he said, um, he said, yes, I think you, you could be quite good in the role. He said, but can you change your accent? And I knew then that uh, this was one of the big problems I was going to face. So the agent I was with at the time said, um, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to change your accent. And you can't be speaking in an Irish accent. And um, 
um, really, if you want to pursue a career in, in theatre or in film in Britain or television, you've got to lose that accent. So I was sent off to this woman in, in, in Richmond who specialised in doing kind of major operations and provincials like me, you know. And um, <clears throat> I spent uh, three weeks with her uh, doing things like... Um, How now, Hi now, Brian Coy, <laughs> and stuff like that. And in the end, uh, she said, there's only one way we can capitalise on what we've done here in the... Uh, in, in the room and that's you've got to go into the street and you've got to talk to people in this accent so I felt really foolish kind of going around the place talking in this assumed English accent and um, I was walking through uh, Regent Street one day and uh, I saw Arthur Lowe wh whom some people may remember as the old guy who was in Dad's Army and I always thought he was a terrific character actor so I saw him in the street and I said well um, I go up to this guy and I'll say to him how much I've admired him but I, I'll do it in my you know my trained accent <laughs> so um, <coughs> I went up to him, and uh, I, w I won't do the accent because it was appalling. And uh, <laughs> I said to him, Mr. Lowe, I said, you don't know me. I said, but um, um, my name is Gabriel Bourne. I'm an actor. And I just wanted to say how much I've admired your performances over the years. So he looked at me uh, very suspiciously, uh, you know, as if I was going to ask him for money or something. <laughs> and then he said, um, he said, um, well, that's very interesting. Uh, thank you very much, he said. And then there was a silence that lasted for about, you know, 10 seconds. And then he said... Well, actually, he said, uh, we're going out your way uh, fairly soon with a play. I said, oh, that's very interesting. I said, are you going to the Gaiety or the, or, or the Olympia? He said, well, we start off in Auckland and then we go to Wellington. <laughs> <laughs> and he thought I was from New Zealand. So after that, I said, I, I don't care what accent I have.